All right, start start us off. All right, Wallahi. <laughs> Wallahi. Oh, we're just going to say it like that? We don't even, we should not do an Let's intro. Just, do we do the intro? We always do the intro. Okay, Wallahi. Wallahi. I don't know where my camera is. You're over here. Oh. Welcome in, Hababies. Uh, to another episode of the A-Raps podcast this week. We are talking about the uh, topic on everyone's mind, uh, Lebanon and Beirut. Is it on everyone's mind, though? Yes. And if anyone's watching this podcast, it's on their mind. If anyone watches a podcast it, with three Arab people. It's on their mind. It's on their mind. It's, it's definitely on their mind. But we're not we're not alone. We're today. not alone. We have uh we have uh come you know uh, coming to you live from Beirut. Yeah, we have uh or Lebanon. We have the uh, boxing master. We have the, the boxing one, master. Two time. We have from the Do Not Worry podcast. The uh, the two time champ. The long nose, yeah. skinny arms, thick calves. Yeah. <laughs> The we bearded have, magician. Staying up till four o'clock in the morning to film this. <laughs> yeah. We have, anyway, I feel <laughs> so bad. Boxing champion. Yeah, we have Anthony Sargon from Do Ooh. We have the Do Not Worry Podcast so, host from Do Not yeah, Worry. It's an, it's, a, it's a crossover. Uh under unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, we were supposed we, to have Anthony for fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One person. I was supposed to come visit in December, but yeah. Yeah, but we don't uh, know if that's going to happen circum- anymore. I wish it was under better circumstances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Honestly, if he comes here in December, it's as a refugee at that point. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> man. Damn, dude. It's no, crazy. Man. Not unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's crazy because when we did this pod, we did the whole like you know Jewish Muslim Christian thing because we talked about the Arabs and stuff, and then the, never thought in my life that we'd have to talk about Lebanon being the same situation as Palestine. Yeah, you know, I was talking to my stream about this, and I was like, obviously, I felt really bad for Gaza, but Lebanon hits different for me. Like yeah. I, I felt like a weight on my chest. Why are you smiling? <laughs> That's kind of that kind of feels weird to say. No, I mean. Like, granted, it's sad people are dying in Gaza, and I've been an advocate about it for years, but now I have to worry about, like, well, my you know, family you know, to home. and my friends. That, that's the thing about uh, being Palestinian is that there, everyone kind of knows Lebanese people. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of people know Lebanese people, but, and, and I saw Hassan talking about this on his stream, but he's like, not, like, Lebanon is, like, a country that most people know someone who's Lebanese. Yeah. Palestine mm-hmm. is not. So me trying to explain Palestine to people is, like, the most difficult thing because pe- pe- most people do not know Palestinian people. There's only like, even during the Nakba, only 700,000 refugees left and fled. Now on the top of that, you know, naming someone who's Palestinian and they're Christian, which is a minority group. Cause we were talking about this, me and Fro. Cause she was like, sometimes like the way you say things could come off as like Islamophobic, but I'm like, it's hard because I also am a, a Christian and it's hard because we are the minority group there. So mm-hmm. I don't, you know, but it's hard. Like, so I think that with Lebanon, most of my family was kicked out of Palestine. There is still people there. Uh, with Lebanon, my entire extended family is there. Yeah. And I lived there for quite, for a while. Yeah. I mean, my whole dad's side is still there. Yeah. Like, you know, I have a couple. I have a couple in Australia and that's it. Yeah. And my dad has 17 brothers and sisters. And I want to say about like 12 or 13 still live in Lebanon. But all my, a lot of my cousins, I have like 60 first cousins. Yeah. Live in Lebanon. I mean, I'm texting my friends like every day, just normal. And Anthony and has Anthony, more family there. Yeah, Anthony's entire fucking. <laughs> Anthony's there. <laughs> Anthony's whole bloodline is I'm there. there. I'm there. Look, actually, ironically, weirdly enough, my parents and my sister are currently like they're in the states right now, so they're pretty safe. But like all my cousins, like my aunts, my uncles, like everyone's here. Most of my friends and family, like yeah, everyone's here, and uh, we're surviving so far. So far, like uh, it depends which area you're in right now. It's the south of Lebanon that's getting hit the most. Uh, Dahye is getting hit a lot. The Bekaa Valley and area is getting hit, and a lot of random other villages and towns around. Like it's uh, dozens and dozens. It's pretty indiscriminate. But most of the attacks have been in limited areas. But seeing what happened in Gaza, you can't help but think that they're going to expand. And it's only been we're like five or six days into uh, this war, so mm-hmm. you never know which targets they're going to go after, and they can just excuse any of it by saying there were weapons underneath it, or there was a target underneath it, and then no one's going to care if there was a hundred civilians or there was no target underneath yeah. it. Or Who's no going to investigate them? Yeah. Who's going to hold them accountable? No one, and we've seen it happen for a year in Gaza right now, so what hope is there for us? I don't really see much of it. So that's kind of my big thing right now is like, we've tried, we've seen people try everything for Gaza. My one hope is that Lebanon is like a, a sovereign nation that is actually recognized by like the, the 
the United Nations and the world. I'm not saying like that doesn't make the struggle in Gaza any less important, but like maybe that gives us a slight advantage where someone might step in. But like again, just seeing how cowardly all these Western nations have been, even other Arab nations, like no one's stepping up, no one's stepping up except like the poorest country, which is Yemen and the Houthis. Yeah. Weirdly enough, like you know what I mean, and like so. It's just kind of crazy. I hope your families are safe. I hope everyone here is safe. You know what I mean? It's kind of freaky. Everyone is really stressed. No one's yeah. getting much sleep. Uh, even if I wasn't going to be recording with you guys, I, I would be probably be up just staring at my phone, refreshing Twitter all the time, watching news, streaming, you know, on, yeah. on TV. Uh, are people still going like to work? Like, they're not stopping. Are people still going to work? What are they doing right now? What is everyone, like, what's the consensus? It's such a weird, it's such a weird dynamic. So like, for example, I work for a, for a television production company. It's based in Dubai. Uh, but like most everyone who works there is Lebanese, but uh, they were pretty like you could tell this whole week, they weren't asking us to do much. Everyone is kind of taking it easy. Uh, but like work is going to have to go on eventually. And I work from home, so I don't have to go to an office or anything. So I'm going to have to work tomorrow, like a nine to five job. Uh, my girlfriend, for example, though, she's a tattoo artist and like piercer and stuff. She's had to, and she has a shop in Beirut. She's had to close her shop the whole week. She can't do any work. So like, wow. it depends if you're an artist. It depends what kind of, uh, what kind of restaurants have been closing in Beirut, like in certain areas, like no one's going to go out and eat and have a good time. And like when bombs are falling everywhere. So yeah. like certain industries are going to get hit. But for people that work like office jobs and can transition to working from home, they're going to have to work from home. But it's like no one is in the right mindset to work, but you have to like get on zoom calls and send emails and, and do tasks and stuff. So, and it's not, it's not the same as it is here. And I think people don't understand that also. I mean, like if you, you for anybody in Lebanon to get on a zoom call, it, it, it takes forever. And if you don't have the right technology, especially in just in your home, it, it's, it's virtually impossible. And then there's power outages all the time. There's I, who knows what the bombings are affecting. You never know. So it's just like kind of like, what do you do? You know, it's not as easy as it is here where we can like, oh, we're just going to work from home. Okay, cool. I have at and We're good. You know? So yeah, I did, it's just it's, tough. It's a tough situation. I read uh, something today that officially, like, like Anthony said, we're like five, six days into this war. A million Lebanese people are displaced yeah, in Lebanon. Yeah. The population in Lebanon is literally it's only 5. five million, 6. like five point six million, and about a million of that or so are refugees from Syria. Mm -hmm. Already, yeah. What, what's uh, what's been happening is that my village down south, my we talked, I talked about, I tweeted about this, but I don't think we talked about it on the pod. My dad's land got bombed, so a missile hit a house, ricocheted, and then landed in my dad's land. So my dad was telling me, no, they're only going after Hezbollah. Then the next six hours later. A fucking missile hit his land, you know, and um, and I was like, yeah, dude, I told you. Now the people in the village, like some of them are staying, but a lot of them are like asking, like, can we rent your places up north so we can get the fuck out of here? Because they like are not safe. So yeah. a lot of people are like texting us and texting family members and cousins and asking us to ask people like, hey, I know like a lot of like expats or, you know, people who went to the States like have houses can we rent them so we can get the fuck out of southern lebanon because people don't realize it's not just hezbollah down there you yeah. know there's a lot of uh there's, there's a lot of, of different course. people yeah you know anthony like you you know we're talking we would fucking have a lebanese person on the phone but like yeah anthony like the south is very mixed you know it's like it's uh, it's all kinds of people absolutely i mean for i mean Maybe the majority of the people that live there are Shiite, but like they're all, they're not all Hezbollah supporters. They're not all necessarily part of the party. They're not active members of the party. And like to your point, Capri, like, uh, for example, like on Instagram, like, like Lebanese Instagram right now, it's all a bunch of people sharing phone numbers for houses and housing and, and people opening up their homes for um, uh, for refugees, essentially, uh, within their own country, uh, people that are displaced, people are sleeping in the streets. They're sleeping in like Hamra. They're sleeping in the middle of downtown Beirut, Should they're where we go protest. They're sleeping in Hamra um, right now, just sleeping on the streets. They're sleeping. They're sleeping in the streets dude, everywhere, like uh, not in Hamra, but in like Corniche, uh, uh, if you know where that is. Yeah, it's like by yeah. the ocean. Yeah, uh, they're sleeping there uh, in the middle of Beirut, uh, like schools. Uh, are like overflown with like uh, with people like hotels everything there's like it's, it's very hard to find housing for everyone and a million displaced people in such a small country and the uh, winter is coming up soon that's also mm -hmm. like messed up they did the same thing in gaza when they started bombing in october people started going homeless and it rains a lot in lebanon like we have pretty wet winters and it gets pretty cold 
So uh, all of these people are going to be homeless in the in the cold months of winter. And this is we're only five days in and we have a million people displaced and they're probably going to destroy Dahye. If they're going to pull a Gaza 2.0, Dahye is going to cease to exist as we know it. Mm. So where are these people going to go? Like in 2006, they were able to rebuild Dahye, like Hezbollah and stuff. Like they were able to kind of bring it back to to uh, to what it was. But like it, it's hard to tell if they if they're going to be able to do that now. And the level of destruction that Israel is comfortable doing publicly with the world just like letting it do it it's just kind of um it's kind of crazy so yeah it's it, it's scary uh and, and, and but, the, uh, but the the dahia doctrine right in 2006 they wanted to level all of dahia uh essentially i don't know if americans may not know this but they want to level all of the civilians so then the civilians put pressure on hezbollah that's their idea and they want to kill as many civilians as possible it's terrorism Mm -hmm. So then they yeah. put pressure to get rid of Hezbollah. It's called the Dahia Doctrine. So the, the, what, what I think a lot of Lebanese people are fearing, which it's, it already looks like that. We've only been 24 hours. They already killed the leadership of Hezbollah. They haven't stopped to take a breath, and they're bombing more. So it looks like they're doing the Dahia Doctrine again, except now all throughout Lebanon. So Israel was trying to do the... Yeah, ask Anthony. We'll know more about that. Yeah, I've never... Yeah, they're... And like and Hezbollah, they've already replaced all of the leadership that have been killed. They've been replaced. So uh, they're just going to keep bombing. And even if they weren't replaced, they're just looking for an excuse to, to do as much damage as they can. And they're basically going to occupy uh, South Lebanon again. Yeah. At this point, like that's what it's looking like. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's, I, kind of messed up. it's like one of the things is I was like, tell my dad, I was like, because my dad's like, no, 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 they're just going to kill Hezbollah and then we're going to be done. And I'm like, no, dude. They're gonna take your land. They're gonna occupy it and take it. You know, my grandfather. You know, it's it's for me. For me, it's my grandfather's buried down there. Yeah, my I, grandfather is also buried down there too. You know, so I like to go and every time I go to Lebanon, I go visit his grave and stuff because I was very close to my grandfather. I used to spend every summer with him three, four, three months as a kid. That was like every year I'd go to Lebanon. So, uh, you know, I right now what I'm seeing is the settlers and and in Israel, they're saying Southern Lebanon, we want to settle it. You know, and a lot of the uh, Israelis on their own, uh, on their on their Twitter are saying Lebanon is not a real country, Syria is not a real country, and Iraq is not a real country. So if you don't, if you don't know what why they're saying that, it's very simple. Uh, Israel has this idea of Greater Israel. They want to make America, but Jewish in the Middle East. So they want to take over all of the Middle East and make it like states, like as big as America, it's America Pardon. essentially. You know, huh? It's part of like a Mecca. Yeah, yeah. It's Egypt, Lebanon, Palestine. Uh, part of Saudi Arabia, I want to say. They're not going to take Saudi. They love Saudi. They they hate they Islamic Saudi. regimes they until they're with Saudi. They, they hate the Islamic regimes until yeah. they're the Saudi Arabians, who are literally the most oppressive fucking regime on the planet, and they kill journalists in other countries. Yet they, when it's uh, when they work with America, they're oh my god, chef's kiss, the best country on earth. So uh, you know, even Lebanese people are afraid of Saudi. My my friends who go to Saudi, they're like, dude, it's it's scary. Like it's a scary place. Um, but yeah, dude, um, what is, uh, like a couple of the things is like, can you see the bombing from your place? Have you like, you know, like wh what have you been doing? You've just been hunkering down and staying at home. I mean, luckily for me, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm in one of the safer areas for now. You can never, you can never feel fully safe yeah. uh, when you're dealing with Israel. And apparently they're even targeting people that are housing refugees, uh, to discourage people from housing anyone. They're just bombing those places and killing some of the like refugees in there so for, for me i'm pretty lucky right now I'm, I'm in which is pretty far and it's considered a christian area so in lebanon so when you're dealing with israel and when they're fighting hezbollah they generally are targeting hezbollah where hezbollah supporters would live again like dahye or um i'm gonna have giraffes or, or this out. Just, by the way bleep what? it just bleep oh, yeah, it. Where so, he's from, yeah yeah bleep oh, where yeah, he's yeah, from yeah. sorry we're, we're just gonna bleep where you're from just in case yeah yeah yeah, yeah no yeah but, yeah no, no worries. Um, um, so, but keep going, I, keep going. What were you saying? But yeah, so uh, I'm relatively safe. But like the most I've been dealing with so far is just like sonic booms. You know what I mean? Just like when when the jets fly overhead and break the the sound barrier, the house kind of shakes. Or like that's pretty much it. But anyone living in Beirut has been hearing all of the insane bombing happening in Dahye. Um, when I was up in the mountains for the past few days, we heard a few of the bombs in like different like mountain areas. But so far, I'm one of the lucky ones, you know what I mean? Like, if you really want to get some 
inside in depth of what like of what like the nightmare that the bombing is you got to talk to someone from like Dahi or the south yeah. they're the ones who are being like displaced and in the streets currently so the the best the only thing i can do to help is honestly just talking to you guys and just sharing the story online but again it's very discouraging when you see p people like bizan uh Mautez, plestia mm -hmm. they did it for a whole year in gaza sharing the most heartbreaking footage just telling their story every day and it made no difference so this feels like futile you know what i mean it all feels yeah. hopeless and you're just waiting for for like israel to get closer and like they're talking about a ground invasion right now some people say it's just in the south but some people are saying they might want to do a full it's just all kind of crazy and with the death of uh, of hassan Nasrallah right now like there's there's a huge power vacuum in the country and everyone's kind of just confused and like okay hezbollah announced a new leader but what does that mean and like mm -hmm. no one really knows who he is and and like it's just all kind of crazy and people are dying like 100 on average right now they're killing like over 100 people a day yeah uh, so uh i think uh i think i mean like i i, I definitely want to keep going on that this path because it's i mean it's important but i think I, I think it'd be important for people since we do have we have a lot of american listeners i mean our majority is american listeners all i think american. it'd be I think it'd be beneficial to everyone if we can kind of get a breakdown of like what what's going on. You know what I mean? Uh, in a way that's like, okay, well, this is Hezbollah. They are, and uh, this is what they're doing, and this is why Israel's attacking them. You know what I mean? Well, let me let me let me ask a question of Anthony because, sure. like, I kind of I get what you're saying, but the one thing that people don't understand is that Hezbollah, and this is my understanding, Anthony, correct me, because Lebanon is one of the complicated places that people who even think they understand the Lebanese yeah, civil dude, war like Lebanon. They don't, they don't fucking get it. You know, I've been like trying to figure yeah, it out yeah. my whole life and I don't get it. Nobody gets it. It's, it's about money. Nobody and gets power. it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's about money and power, you know? So my question is that Hezbollah is in, was in control majority of the government right now. So they're a political party. It would be like telling Americans don't go anywhere where there's Republicans. Cause we're going to kill the Republicans. Everybody else is safe. So, that's the issue is that who are they killing in Hezbollah? Are they killing the police officers that are Hezbollah? Are they killing the ground? So I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, yeah. So, so in a way, and like just to, to, to try to answer Raf uh, as well, like I, I'm no historian. Yeah. I'm the least qualified person to talk about like politics in general. So yeah. like uh, the, my only qualification is having a podcast and having a microphone and, and knowing <laughs> you guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's why I'm here. But like, basically, yeah. So Hezbollah started off as like a resistance force in like 1982 when Lebanon was actually invaded by Israel. Like they mm -hmm. came in, they went into Beirut and they like murdered a whole bunch of people and it was really messed up. So Hezbollah, just like Hamas, just like all of these resistance forces that come out that are labeled as terrorists come out out of a need of like defending your own land and trying to get occupiers out of your land. Has Have, have Hezbollah done some questionable things or violent things? Yes, of course. But like, to them, it's in the name of resistance. I'm not here to say whether it's right or wrong, but everyone has their reasons. And again, when you have occupiers in your country that aren't supposed to be there sometimes, and when they're being violent, you're going to retaliate and use violence um, against them. So in that sense, that kind of ex explains Hezbollah. And what just happened mm -hmm. now is after October 7th, Hezbollah started shooting rockets over at Israel yeah. to kind of defend yeah. Gaza and like to help out with the fight in Gaza because no one else was doing anything. Now, of course, you could say that they're manipulated by Iran and then they have their own interests. It's not right. as naive as that they were just sending rockets to help Gaza. Of course, they have their interests. Of course, it's all like a, a game of 4D chess that like none of us really understand. But um, they were defending Gaza and they were trying to keep the battle very contained. Like for a whole year, Israel has been trying to escalate this into a full scale war. And actually, Hassan Nasrallah, who's labeled like a, a crazy terrorist right now in, we in Western media, was the only guy keeping things at like a cool pace. Like anytime Israel would like assassinate someone in Beirut, which was crossing like a red line, which it had kind of agreed upon. Hassan Nasrallah would make a speech and kind of just like cool all the tensions. They wouldn't respond extremely violently as to, to keep Israel kind of chill and at bay. But now the Israelis have just lost the plot and are completely like right. have just kind of gone crazy. But that's what started this latest battle right now. Ever since October 7th, Hezbollah yeah. started responding. Uh, Capri, may you remind me of what your question was? No, I'm saying that Hezbollah, the idea that like Hezbollah is like just this, this group or this... A know, political party. Yeah. So, they started off as as a resistance force, and I guess with time again, I, I'm not really I'm not the best person to ask. No, no, but yeah, like, yeah. What they grew so much in power and influence 
that they started to run for office and eventually they teamed up with another political party here in Lebanon, which was a Christian party, the Aune party, yeah, uh, which was which is associated with the with the, the former president, uh, President Michel, Michel Aoun in Lebanon. Uh, they kind of made an alliance. So together with that alliance, they at, so, at one point did have the majority in, the, in, in parliament in Lebanon. So, yeah, they, they're part of the government. I wouldn't say it's not like it's not as simple as saying uh, it, like Republicans versus Democrats because they're like they have their own ideology. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, it's more like a r- religious ideology. And mm-hmm. like we, we don't really have Democrats and Republicans in Lebanon. You have like liberals, but like everything. It's all messed up. Our politics here are like a joke and our political parties are, are <laughs> yeah. extremely corrupt. And they've all been around since like the Civil War in the 90s. And like it's we got a bunch of like yeah. uh, crime lords at the head of, of political parties. So it's all insane. But yeah, they've, they, and, but like, and whatever people think about Hezbollah, a lot of Christians in Lebanon hate Hezbollah. A lot of Muslims hate Hezbollah. A lot of Shiites hate, hate Hezbollah. But it's not as blue white. Like, yeah. They're the only ones that, that protected Lebanon. In 2006, they protected us against an, an Israeli invasion. They're the ones who helped kick out the Israelis. Um, in 2000, uh, they actually helped defeat ISIS in Syria. Like, everyone calls them terrorists, but like, the real terrorists are ISIS. And uh, so, like, that's. It's kind of crazy, but um, yeah. It, it's one of those things where it's like so complicated because I know members of my family fucking hate them. And then some people are like, no, but I get like it's it's one of those things like Lebanese politics. There's no good guy. There's no bad guy. I think that's yeah. what Americans are really looking for. They're looking for a good guy and a like bad a hero guy. And, like a, and yeah. really the good guy is that it's it's very simple. I know who the bad guy is. It's, it's Israel. It's very that's a very clear fucking indication. Exactly. It's an occupying force. They kicked out my fucking family in the in the in the Nakba. You know, mm-hmm. and then half my other family, they uh, they fucking made their lives a living hell. Then they had Israelis here fucking kill them in the United States. I mean, like, it's one of those things. So the one thing that, like, cr- is blowing my fucking mind, what still does, is that Lebanese people, like some of them, not all of them, but they're still nationalist Lebanese people that are like, fuck the Palestinians. You know, like, those are pieces. And you're, like, laughing. You're yeah, like, dude. Yeah. And you're like, dude, I don't think you understand. Like, they, they think they're white. They're like, that. the whole meme, I'm Phoenician. <laughs> You know, they're like, I'm not Arab. I'm Phoenician, Habibi, you know? Insane. You know, I, dude, you know what was actually funny is I heard Hassan call Lebanese people gay, too. They- <laughs> and it's like one of those funny memes because they're like, I'm Phoenician. I'm very strong. And I'm like, dude, like, what's <laughs> like unironic? No, I mean, the meme is like Lebanese men are the gayest men But ever. they're they're very, like a you lot of them are, Anthony? they're very nationalistic. I think- <laughs> I think it's our accents. It's the way we speak Arabic, like our, our, our Dadish accent, like our common accent, because you can speak Arabic in two ways, basically the formal way and the like uh, common street way, I guess, or the, uh, yeah. you know, so when we speak the regular way, it sounds apparently pretty gay. Uh, we've been told on Twitter, Twitter is like Arab Twitter is pretty determined that we're the gayest of, of, of the Arabs. <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah, no, they're, like, you know. they're like, oh, they're cool. hello, <laughs> hello, kifa <laughs> kabiri. <laughs> No, but uh, and, we mix, and we mix with between French, English, and Arabic, yeah. which is kind of cringy. And we like we have T-shirts that say "Hi, Kifak Sava." It's pretty bad. It's pretty dude, bad. Dude, but one like, of yeah. these. Uh, w- uh, towards the end of the pod, we got. I gotta just have a fun conversation about the Frenchies in Lebanon and how the Frenchies refuse to speak English and stuff. Like, there's like the. But my mom's a French. Dude, I speak. <laughs> my first language is French. I speak French with my parents at home, dude. Like really? that, that shit. So yeah, yeah you're, you're that? talking shit about his mom. No, dude, I'm telling you, when you go to Lebanon, there's groups of people that they go to French school and they will refuse Bro, to speak to you English. Speak yeah. English. My, yeah. I have but a, they like they think it's like low class. Like no, I, no, no, we don't speak English. We speak French. I'm like motherfucker. They're all <laughs> occupying you. I, no, I have <laughs> a, getting, speak Arabic, you stupid fuck. Dude. I have a cousin <laughs> after the explosion in Beirut in like 2018. She was like. France needs to come back and occupy Lebanon. It'll be better that way. I'm like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> it used to be the fattest that- of the Middle East. <laughs> That's a lot of like, Lebanese people, have, they have a thing for like dictators and like, just because I mean, to them, Arabs running Arab countries is like a failed experiment. But like, I mean, in reality, it's just Western <laughs> countries meddling over many yeah. years. And also, yeah. I mean, look, a lot of corrupt leaders and, and pieces of shit being elected. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's the history of the Middle East for the most part. It's always been run by someone, some occupying force. You know what I mean? It's always been like the Romans come in at some point or it, it's later on it's the French that come in. Now it's Israeli trying to come in. The other day so, I was like wait. arguing about, uh, I was arguing about uh, me not being Palestinian. Wait, can per- I say something? Yeah. Uh, first. Like the one thing that I'll say, and this is like Anthony, you may have to like, it just makes me like, it makes me kind of hopeless because it makes me feel like 
the resistance to Israel is hopeless and then that those any group was set up to fail because Israel can turn the button and kill them at any point. I mean, the way I think about it is um like Anthony and I were talking about this in stream kind of a couple of days ago. Um so a lot of people see Lebanese people as super super resilient especially after the 2006 war. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh but it's just like we have that like the stereotype of resilience but it's just like we shouldn't have to be like fighting for our fucking lives right now i mean dude, as they are dude, you know like, what i mean that's the one thing about lebanon is every time you go out everywhere you, everyone you talk to and every time you go out it's just like let's party like there's no tomorrow because the likelihood there may not be a fucking tomorrow you know and like they're just like you know yeah and, and to your point like i mean we're tired of being resilient like we don't yeah. like being called that anymore because it's like we've had to go through so many things and like um for example like the the huge blast on august 4th and 2020 like the, the 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 port blast in beirut i was in beirut when that happened like i thought i was gonna die essentially and hezbollah was partly responsible for that yeah. they were the ones yeah. who were storing the ammonium nitrate at the port but it was no one says it publicly but it was it was a blast like it was detonated by an israeli like either drone or a jet Mo more than likely a lot of people heard it a lot of people saw it so a lot of people blame hezbollah for a lot of bad things that happened including myself but even my even i mourn kind of mourn his death because he was he was part of like our lives for so long he was the leader of of, of that political party for 30 years uh, he always popped up on speeches that my dad used to watch when i was a kid and like he was a very and I never really understood his value until this last year when I kept seeing Israel again trying to escalate the war over and over again and him being the, the one to keep everything chill and like avoiding the whole regional war. Uh, so uh, the whole country is a pretty you're, depressed no, as you're, well. You're good, sorry. <laughs> what happened? No, I was like looking at the cameras. Are all the cameras broken? No, 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 no. My, I, I think I, I sat, I changed my seating position. Oh no, it had nothing to do with that. Your camera stopped recording. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we have a wide though. Yeah, we have a wide. Okay, yeah, good. keep going. Sorry, Andy. Yeah, can yeah, you, uh, good. can you pick it up? No, from... It happens. I, 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 the thirty minute thing, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's a no, dude, So, no, and I get it. I get your perspective. I mean, like the thing is, Anthony, like you're the first Lebanese person that I that I ever heard talk about the situation that I agreed with. You know what I'm saying? Like. Because, like, one of the things is that, like, I talk to a lot of Lebanese people and they're, like, 90% of the time they're super fucking conspiracy theorists. Or they're, like, they yeah. don't see, like, both sides of the issue. They're, like, one side is the victor and the other side, they did nothing, you know, they're the terrorist. And it's, like, but, like, the thing is, like, with Lebanon, it's, like, even explaining people, like, I did, like, a whole thing on my stream where we did the Lebanese Civil War. And I was, like, dude, I don't understand this and I've been trying to figure it out. But the, but the, the situation is very simple. America has consistently meddled with Lebanon. Like, even to Ronald Reagan, people don't even realize that, dude. They were fucking bombing the shit out of, uh, out of Beirut. But, like, America's consistently meddled with Lebanon, and they've meddled with Palestine. And the whole, the whole reason the Civil War happened was because of fucking Palestinians moving into Lebanon. And then you had, like, a bunch of issues with, like, you know, Christian nationalists don't want them there and all this other bullshit. And then, like, all these people like Syria tried to occupy it. But it's really one of those things where, like, this is all the fucking, this is all Israel. And Israel is just an extension of the United States. Because if yeah. Israel was a sovereign yeah. country, if Israel is a fucking sovereign nation, then it would be able to fight its own fucking battles and not get paid by another nation to fight those battles. Yeah, I agree. You know, so it's one of those things. It scares me. And I know, I know that, I know that you're saying like in 2006 or Lebanese people are resilient, but dude, like, I don't know, man, the Israeli regime now is, mm. is so right wing. It's so nationalistic. It's fucking, it's scary, man. I don't, I don't know what to we say. We can't take we can't take any more and like right now the Israeli like the this attack it, be, they're doing the Gaza thing so like we can't take this like no one like Lebanon is is crushed like economically it's already been doing horrible since like 2019 so like this is the last thing that the country needed like to, like resistance and all of that like is a nice thing and it's a, obviously I I am for helping Gaza but like in terms of like this making sense and economically for the country, we can't afford this war. We like everyone's already living half the, the country's living like below the, the poverty line. People are barely making it by. We have like hyperinflation. Um, it's crazy. There's like a bunch of prisoners that ran loose out of a prison in like an area called Jezine right now. Like a hundred prisoners got loose out of a prison and started running around town and shooting and stuff. But like they Wait, killed what? most of them right now. <laughs> what? It's like the that. wild west out here, bro. It's crazy. It's wild. Wait, explain, like speaking, explain that. What happened? Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know. I just saw it on Twitter, dude. Like 130 prisoners <laughs> busted out of a prison in Jazeen, and we're running out, we're shooting guns. Oh, I know and what that is. Just, it's, it's just a bunch of tweets like, "Stay in your homes and lock your doors. Don't come out of your homes." Dude, there's a purge out there. People right are freaking now. out. Anthony, we so, can. Believe- it's not funny, but dude, fuck. It's, so it's kind of Le- Lebanon is so funny. It's Anthony, not funny, but Anthony, the minute I got off the plane to Lebanon, I go to a hookah bar. Um, I think it was called. <laughs> Senor, I used to go there a bunch. And you were, yeah, yeah, that place I, is busting, man. Yeah, I love that place. The fucking the food slaps, dude. Frogan, you would like it. Why would I like because it? Because it's they have, chicken. they have chicken. But I feel like I would thrive in Lebanon cuisine wise. Yeah, did you? T- Frogan actually caused this war because Frogan kept saying, "I just want to go to Lebanon so bad, but all this shit is making me nervous." Like, I am I am I like. Am I selfish for saying I never got to experience Lebanon? I go, no, we'll get to go. And then they fucking start bombing. No, because my, my dad has PTSD from growing up in the Civil War in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So he never took us growing up. And that the only time my mm-hmm. dad had ever been back to Lebanon was when his dad died. He flew with the body to bury him in Lebanon because mm-hmm. my grandpa didn't want to be buried in America. And then he went like one time a couple years ago when he wasn't in my life to visit my aunts and uncles yeah i mean my dad three weeks ago was fighting with me you were there right he was fighting with the frogan was there he was fighting mm-hmm. with me he goes i'm Scootish going to was he's like i'm going to lebanon i'm like no you're fucking not he's like what's gonna happen my my uncle died and the israel bombed right next to their house and like because they bombed Daya, but my uncle lives right fucking across the street where i used to play soccer as a kid in, in the summers so they're like Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, they did bomb right next to the house. I'm like, yeah, you fucking idiot. Like, what do you think is happening? Like, <laughs> like people, if this is the one thing I know, this is my measure for Lebanon. When I text my idiot cousins who genuinely have no fear of anything or don't have a fear, 99% of the time they're like, there is nothing. You're being a bitch. You know, that's all they say. You're being a bitch. Yeah. We live through this. This is the first time they texted me and they're like, I don't know, man. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. fuck. You know, it's not because we just saw Gaza again, like at this point, there's a there's a reference point and it's just so fresh in all of our minds. And we've all been staring at our phones and seeing the genocide happen live. So and they're, they're using the same playbook, like everyone is, is a Hezbollah sympathizer. They have rockets in their kitchens. They have this. They have that uh, bases underneath homes and hospitals. So it's the pretty garage, terrifying. the and garage with the rocket launcher is my favorite because I know that a fucking ICBM on a truck couldn't fit in a fucking Lebanese goddamn road because the roads fit fucking cars that are like toy like, like matchbox, l- matchbox cars. cars you know i, I one time I, I was driving through lebanon and a and a military truck just a regular truck came up my way and i was going the other way and the fucking military was like we're gonna fucking hit you and they hit my car and fucked up my grandfather's car and my grandfather got pissed damn. at me and they were like sorry like we had to hit you and they had their uh because military trucks, they have the exhaust on the side, yeah. and it fucking it hit the car, and they're like, "Yeah, whatever," you know, like. But that's the thing. I'm like, "There's no fuck. This is all bullshit." Like, they're showing like Modern Warfare two graphics to be like, "This is what Lebanon looks like." I'm like, "Brother, I, I don't think you understand." Like, nobody has garages, yeah. and if you have garages, you're a multimillionaire. You're probably not storing a rocket in there because you probably are too rich to get involved with this shit. You know, you know? how my dad would sell Lebanon to us as a kid. Exactly. He'd uh, be like, "There's halal KFC." Halal McDonald's. I know that McDonald's. I don't know that KFC. Um, oh, they love K- Arabs. Love dude, KFC. Yeah. How big is KFC right now? Well, I mean, uh, so th- there's like a stereotype that like Shia love fried chicken. Yeah. So we love fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, there's also like I don't know. I never get that. Like we also broasted chicken is huge in Lebanon. Broasted. It's kind of like oh, uh, yeah, it's like I've this pressure frying, deep frying. It's a little bit different than like regular fried chicken, but like that's that is extremely popular here. Roasted chicken, you, but like you know, we love a fried chicken. You know what's funny is that Gaza for a while was using the tunnels from Egypt to sneak in fucking KFC through the tunnels. They were literally doing DoorDash or like whatever they were doing, like deliveries through the fucking tunnels of KFC. <laughs> Dude, fuck KFC. Before this, before the war, like before the war, that's what yeah, they would use the tunnels. Yeah, for. Now, now we have to boycott KFC. I got in trouble for having a McDonald's po- post boycott because I was talking shit about all this boycotting and I like made fun of like a famous Lebanese influencer for having McDonald's like two days after the war started and people were just like boycotting and he was just like having a McMuffin. So uh, I just talked about having McDonald's because I felt like being honest, and then like my aud- my own audience killed me for it. They they crucified me for, oh, wait, for having I McDonald's. I remember that video. Oh. I was like, that's so basic. Sometimes you think about like the twenty piece chicken nugget meal, and you're like, fuck, like 
<laughs> Dude, I'm listen, I'm always down for the boycotts, but we're the victims of this. If I want McDonald's, all of you motherfuckers need to not be eating that shit and we get to go to <laughs> fucking McDonald's. That's what I'm gonna say. No, but and I'm not even there. You know? But now now that we're getting genocided, no more McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta have those alternatives. We, have, we have great alternatives, like some like nothing like if it's a very specific kind of craving, so you just have to find uh, a different but like to, i wanted to make a point to your point raf like uh the capri uh when like all these countries are meddling and shit like right now basically there's like a million displaced lebanese people that are crossing the syrian border and they they're gonna make their way to europe like europe keeps complaining about refugees but they keep creating more refugees and people that are yeah. like, that are coming to their countries so it's like stop fucking with our countries stop making stop destroying our homes stop making these places unlivable and you're not going to have to deal with these refugees that you hate so much. So it's like, what do they want? You know what I mean? They bomb us here. They destroy our homes. And then they complain when we go to their countries to move there because we have nowhere to live. So they're creating all these problems and they're just letting Israel get away with it. And, and it's just kind of crazy. But like, yeah, right now there's a huge housing crisis that's going to, and homelessness crisis. And, and, and it's, it's going to exacerbate an already really bad economic situation. And it's all because of, meddling just, yeah, like, it's not like we're not perfect our politicians are horrible and they're very corrupt and even if they're given free reigns it doesn't mean it's going to be better but like, at least let us make our own mistakes and our own fuck-ups let yeah, us don't, own don't it meddle ourselves in my country but, like, and then... the meddling just makes everything worse and now they're creating like just absolute chaos in yeah. the region and in the country internally i said yeah. i said this one time uh i was debate uh, debating a guy and he was like i don't remember but the guy was like Oh yeah, you guys are bad. Just like being, uh, you know, Islamophobic, Arab, you know, uh, racist and whatever. And I was like, the fact that like we got kicked out of our countries because you came into my fucking country, you cucked me, we, you stole the fucking resources. Then we came to your fucking countries and still beat you at your own game and became more successful than you in your fucking country shows how much fucking how stupid fucking Americans are to let me come here after you fuck us up and we still are more successful than you, like the Arab community. And I'm like, fuck you, like. We we yes we are resilient. Like and if you want to get technical about that bullshit, whenever you apply to grad school, Arabs don't have their own fucking category. Mm -hmm. We have to apply as white. I had to apply as white, and I got accused of getting into the school I got into because of um, what the fuck is it called? Uh, uh, affirmative action. Affirmative action. I'm like no, I had to, <laughs> I had to apply as white, but no. everybody does. Like all these like med students and lawyers and pharmacists. I saw I saw a uh, it's white or Caucasian. I saw a really yeah. good video on why that is. Like I know that you have yeah. the reason, but another another perspective was that uh, when they were this is before the medical stuff. This has nothing to do with doctors, but this was like years ago when they were classifying the races. The the guy who actually classified the races, which is racist, the idea of classifying the race, like black people are not a monolith. Like you look at Africa, it's fucking different. Yeah, uh, they all look so different to me. It's like what the fuck are you talking about? But anyways. Mm -hmm. They couldn't figure out really what to do with Arabs because they white people were like, oh, we have Greece and we have Rome. But like the original fucking the original civilization was in Africa. It was black people and Arabs. Mm -hmm. So they had to say Arab people are white because they couldn't say that like, oh, yeah, the most successful uh, longest running empire of all time. The, the Egyptian empire was actually black and, <laughs> and fucking Arabs. So they were like, no, you guys are also white, just like us. like. You know, but that's that's the idea. Is so, that, you know, the so I used to do diversity, equity and inclusion research. And a lot of it was looking into why, because a lot of the population I worked with was obviously Arabs. Yeah. So for the census reasons, uh, when Arabs started immigrating to America, like during the wars, they were, they thought getting classified as white would make them receive less racism. When in reality, from the research perspective, it just like puts them into a pool where Arab needs aren't met. You know, they changed it. I just got to, I got to, yeah, they changed the census uh, a couple years ago. I got, I got to, um, I got to add on uh, Instagram that says that Arabs are now Middle Eastern or MEA. It's still Caucasian. You still have to select it, but it, it's, it says MENA now, I think. No, it's still under, uh, it? you can select Arab oh, like okay. under Caucasian. Thank God. Yeah. It's a sub, it's a subclass of Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Because the Isle of Caucasus or whatever the fuck it is. They're, they're not us, bro. Stop trying to take our well, fucking ca culture, ca dude. Caucasian is just, it's just Europe. That's all it is. All I'm going to say is, I want to get canceled. White people don't have a culture. Arabs do. No, they do. No, no. Keep no, no. It. No, you can keep that in. The deal is, there's two types. What, what the fuck is a 
culture. Hold on, you have hold on, fucking hold on. London. Their their really, their key dish is t- chicken tikka uh, masala. Excuse me, dude. KFC. You're also yeah, white, f- by the way, so you could say that. But the deal is, I can say that my mom. She's never gonna watch this podcast, but I call her the Rachel Dolezal of Arabs because she like claims being Arab. Yeah, she does like she does dress like an Arab for non for non Arab. My mom might <laughs> looks like a Lebanese woman. Well, here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. White people came here and they voluntarily got rid of their culture from their like home countries to kind of merge into this melting pot. Black people involuntarily got rid of their culture because they got like literally like, oh, you're from Africa. I yeah. don't care if you're from Ethiopia or Nigeria, even though those two people look totally fucking different or yeah. Egypt. You're all black <laughs> now and you have no fucking culture. They had to reinvent their culture. The reason why Arabs have culture is because most of us are like first generation or second generation, whereas white people have been here for so long. They've just assimilated. It's the same thing with Israelis. Why the fuck do I listen to Israeli music? It sounds like kids bop for fucking foreigners. Listen, dude. no, Israeli culture is literally, literally tabula and hummus. But it's not good tabula and hummus. It's awful. It's fucking dog shit. Raf when he said the food was bad. It's pretty like, bad. It's like fake Arabic food. Oh man, yeah, that's the like that's the most offensive part. Like that's what triggers like Lebanese people the most on like Twitter is when you see like when we see like an Israeli plate of hummus or something, and it's a, it nothing drives us more because like we're very proud of our food. You're talking about like culture. Like yeah. I think in terms of culture, white people have like the worst cuisines. Like German food just sounds <laughs> it's just like sausages, and other than that, it's like horrible. British cuisine is disgusting. Like what is American food like other than like just fast food? Anthony, and, like, I have a question for you. Stuff? Like I don't even know. Wait, when, like burgers are technically German. No, so, like, what, what, you, like, you know, dude, the, the, when it comes the, to the Twitter, no, keep going, Anthony. But, but so when it comes to food, like I think le- like Middle Eastern food, because like, we all pretty much have the same thing, just different variations. But like uh, successfully, what I like about Lebanese people is like we've labeled all Middle Eastern restaurants in the States, like 90% of them are like Lebanese restaurants. Like yeah. we've dicked over everyone else. Like I have my Syrian friend used to always get mad at me. He's like, motherfucker, it's the same food. Like you're all just ha- with your Lebanese restaurants it's not everywhere. It's the same food. But- it's not the same food. Richer parts of the country get better spices. That's why sometimes the food is better in those parts of the country. Dude. How do you know that? I just, oh. dude, dude, it's just commerce. I was just saying. <laughs> it's, just, it's just economics, dude. I think you just made that up. I did, but it didn't sound cool. No, it, it was very incorrect because usually poor people will like put the, the care and love into their food. But they don't have the best spices. I was going to say something, but I know it's a serious episode. Yeah. I was going to say, I would suck toes to try a mini East from Lebanon. It's, re- it's a lot better. It is a lot better. <laughs> <It's>, it is, <laughs> like, I would do anything to eat like, a mini East if, like, from Lebanon. So... The, the one thing that's like funny is that there's two types of like genocide, right? There's like genocide of real people and then there's like cultural genocide, right? Like this is fucking funny. Mm-hmm. But like Those motherfuckers trying to take hummus and say it's Israeli is the most insane thing to me. Dude, the fact that they have the audacity to create Sabra and make that like the staple hummus of America, insane. Yeah, the- that shit was so bad, dude. I used to have that shit up. Like, I, so, like, I'm an American citizen. If, if you guys don't know, like, if, if anyone watching, so, like, I live, I went to college in the States. I was born in the States in 1990, but, like, I moved back to Lebanon and I was raised here in Lebanon until I was, a, I was like 17, moved to the States for college. And I went to George Mason University uh, in Northern Virginia. So there was like a little convenience store on campus and they always sold like the sub to hummus with the pretzels Ugh, and yeah. like that shit tasted rancid, bro. And I didn't even know it was Israeli. And then I, until I found out it was Israeli, yeah, it's I was like, that makes a lot of sense. They don't know their hummus, but like, yeah, that's Dude. super offensive to us. And like, that's actual like cultural appropriation. Like people get mad when someone has like dreadlocks and they call that culture. I'm like, come on, just, it's just like a hairdo. Like, it's okay. People like white people are allowed to have dreadlocks if they want dreadlocks, but like actually trying to claim our food, our desserts. Or what like, do you, uh, it's, it's, it's what do you think of like dessert hummus? You know how like they created like brownie hummus and Ugh. like pizza that's hummus. That's like, gross. That's like Twitter bait. If you want to get like rage bait on like Twitter and get like Arabs to just go insane, just post some kind of weird <laughs> hummus variation and they'll just lose their minds. Bro, it's so, so like chocolate weird. hummus, all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's so it's, weird it's, it's and no. fucking annoying here when people are like, "Have you ever tried the chocolate hummus?" I'm like, I honestly fucking <laughs> hope you trip and break you your mean fucking pudding. Nose. Have you ever Dude, had pudding? I tried it. It, t- it tastes gross. <laughs> it's gross. It's fucking gross. But Didn't I we have s- it on the pod. We had like, uh, what was it? No, mm-hmm. you got something from a store, but it wasn't hummus. And it was like, some- it was no, that was um, that was from our brother. It was like a lebne. So I there's this guy that has like a stand near us. Uh, he's a Lebanese guy. He had pistachio lebne. 
Yeah, it was gross. It was so fucking weird. It was, it was, not, it was not lemonade. It was, I think it was yogurt. Well, no, the thing is, like, pistachio lemonade is just yogurt that's flavored pistachio. No, it's not. It's it's fermented cheese. Well, the lemonade is just strained yogurt. The lemonade is just strained lemon. That's all it is. So you just you take all the fucking water out. But the thing is, he made it lemonade, so it was super sour. Yeah. And then he put pistachios and in it. And it was, like, sweet. Like, it was Habibi, gross. You can make just regular mm. lemon with fucking pistachios, and it'd be, like, sweet. But he was Arab, so it was, like, whatever. He's like, yeah. no, 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 I've been making this for six generations. And, and he gave it to me for free, too, because I was Lebanese, so. No. Uh, we got pull still here, dude. You come yeah. back. We got pull here, man. Anthony. This is where you should be. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, what's, like, one thing that Americans misunderstand about lebanon in general here's the deal i always so this is the thing you know personally as a as as a as a day walker half lebanese half palestinian i've always told people i'm lebanese because i know that the minute i tell people i'm palestinian there's always like an air of like if they're jewish they may like get really fucking weird with me and be like oh are you cool are we good which has happened to me i mean there's fucking clip ai did it to me yesterday so but the deal is uh I was like hid with the Lebanese thing because I really didn't want to piss off. Like, like if I talk to real Arabs, like if I talk to Arabs from Syria or something like that, I'd be like, I'm I'm Palestinian, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if I talk to Lebanese people, I'm Lebanese because pa- Lebanese people are also racist towards Palestinians, by the way. Mm-hmm. So um, good, you know. I know you you you're one of the biggest fucking uh, ops, dog. I have a reason to be though. But the one thing is, uh, a lot of a lot of restaurants here will say Lebanese because it's the most benign. Arab like we don't have any pro- everybody knows a Lebanese person you know and I think that this yeah, yeah. this is the one war where I think people are like oh I have friends from Lebanon I know people because there's a lot of like Lebanese there's there's Lebanese living all over the world Palestinians they they got us pretty good they fucking killed a lot of us you know there's like three of us yeah left. so uh you know that's the one thing like what can you tell like Americans about Lebanon that they may not fucking understand because I mean I mean the other day I had to tell Americans that I, I did a Twitter poll. 500 people responded. I said, do you know that the word Allah is the same thing that we use in the church for God? And they said, 30% said no. They didn't know that. I mean, even growing up, like, my mom is white. And so my grandma, whenever we'd be able to be like, you're Allah. I'm like, dude, it's literally <laughs> God in Arabic. So 100%. No, like, it's literally that. So, like, what's one thing that you would tell Americans that, like, they may not know about Lebanon, especially with what you guys are going through, like, to, you know, like, to humanize the situation? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy that we even have to to do this and like it's have fucking to, disgusting. to I, explain it, to people that yeah. we're normal. No, I know, like it's it's insane. But like, and I, I might be a little bit different than than maybe most regular like Lebanese people because like I, I've I've lived in the states for a while. Uh, I'm I'm more Americanized than than some some other Lebanese than most Lebanese people. But like, we're just normal. It's a it's a country that's like all, pretty much split three ways between Shiites, uh, Shias, Sunnis, and Christians. It's like almost thirty percent around that number and and we have and a small Jews, Jews population Jews, so yeah. uh so we're living i mean we're coexisting it's not perfect there are clashes there are tensions a lot of times a lot of people hate each other sometimes there's some racism wait wait, wait. what did you uh, say we have a small what population i'm sorry i i, t- I spoke over Jews. oh yeah, yeah Jews yeah. population are there and jewish like people living dollars. in lebanon because i've heard that there's jewish people living in lebanon they just say they're christian oh yeah so i said Druze. we out there there used Druze. to be a small jewish no, population as well yeah uh, but like, uh, there's very few Jewish people in Lebanon at the moment, and okay. I mentioned Druze. Uh, you don't know what Druze are? It's its own religion. It's uh, they're also they're an ethno religion, so they're a, an ethnicity and a religion. It's almost like if you took Christianity, uh, Islam, and Judaism, and you had a baby with the three of them. That's kind of like that's the best way I could describe it. I don't know. Maybe Anthony will describe it better. I think Ethi- Ethiopians are. Of, there's Druze maybe. all over the world. There's Druze in Israel. Yeah, that's what who got bombed by the Hezbollah rocket. It yeah. was a Druze. Right. So, but anyways. Yeah, I don't know much about the like the the religion, so I shall refrain from from describing it. Um, totally, but fine. like it's a, it's a, it's a super normal country, dude. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, there's some there's some they're like some more religious people than others, but like people just watch Netflix. They they like to go to the beach. We have a very vibrant nightlife. You know, uh, it's kind of cringe to talk about it because like that's all people think about. But like we have. A great, uh, we have a great cuisine and like we have a lot of great restaurants. People like to go out, they like to have fun. People are super generous here. It's like a common Arab thing, like Palestinians, Arabs, Iraqis, Syrians. Everyone is like 
Arab culture in general are very, people are very generous. Like if you, everyone knows, like if, if you visit a friend's house, the mom is going to feed you until you're full and you can't refuse an, an extra plate of food and they constantly want to stuff your face. And like everyone's very friendly and nice and people like to go to the beach and uh, read comic books and go to the movies and like just, just regular things. You know what I mean? So we Do just don't want to be genocided. And it's just insane that like our lives have just been deemed worthless and it's one of those things where uh it it drives me a little it almost kind of pisses me off a little bit because i feel like the way people have been talking about lebanon is a little bit better than the way they've been talking about than palestine because they're kind of like because they know they know a lot of people know lebanon and they're like well lebanon is like a real place like you know it's like they have nightlife and parties and i'm like yeah dog but like does that mean we kill fucking palestinians like because my mom was in fucking ramallah and she was getting drunk and smoking hookah but their lives are shit specifically because they're living under fucking military occupation. Yeah. But I know my Palestinian cousins go out, they drink, they have fun. Like, if that's a prerequisite, you have to, like, it's westernization. It's that, like, if you're like us, we won't kill you. Exactly. You so, know? And, and, and if you're not like us, you're oppressive. And it's like, no, maybe, like, maybe Muslim people, they don't, they don't drink alcohol, but I know a lot of them fucking smoke weed and do a lot of fucking coffee and do a lot of fucking cigarettes and shit. So, like, is that... What, what's the cool thing for you? You know, like, like that, that's the deal is like, instead of going to clubs, they go to fucking hookah bars and they, and they close that shit down and they fucking get lit, you know, like, so it's like one of those things where it's like, we, you, what, what you're saying, Anthony is like, we shouldn't have to explain ourselves, but the only reason we're doing it is because we're at the fucking, you, you guys are at the fucking whims of a sh- fucking shithole country, which is Israel that c- can't afford to fight its own fucking wars. And yeah. you're trying to plead with the United States that doesn't give a shit about you. And right now, Biden is going to be out of office. And 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 you said this on your pod, um, yeah. is that they're they're going to wait 40 days, and it's probably going to be 40 days of fucking bombing. And look what they've done in five days. Mm-hmm. And they're going to wait yeah. 40 days until the new president comes in before he'll fucking stop. But that shit doesn't make any sense to me because the election happens, but then they don't take office until January. Because I think that you can kind of foresee what the policies are going to be, and if uh, and if the and if and once the and once the campaign is dunning, uh, done dunning, once the campaign <laughs> is done, you basically <laughs> kind of know like, hey, I think that Netanyahu knows his days are up, and I, and I said this to my dad, and my dad and me got in a fight, and I was like, a hundred percent, they're going to go into Lebanon and start a war, and he's like, no way, they'll never touch us, but mm-hmm. and I'm, we're too strong. Can I say something but bleep it? Do you watch anime? <laughs> Uh, not a lot. Uh, the, the the last anime that I watched was Hajime no Ippo, the the boxing oh, anime. Dude, such a good one. Uh, r- right, right when I started training, it's it's amazing. Yeah, dude, like, that, I, that, never, that, like I used to watch Pokemon when I was younger. I used to watch some football anime, a little bit of Dragon Ball, but like I never watched like the full saga. Hajime pumps you up much. in a way that I don't think people who don't watch it understand. It makes you it 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 fires you up, and you learn a lot about boxing too. It's super educational. It's really it's good. Pretty, I, I like all the like sports anime are good. Like you just have like a new team or a new opponent to fight yeah. for like one episode or multiple episodes. Yeah, uh, kind of self-contained. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty and it good. motivates you to like work out. Weirdly enough, like a cartoon, and it's pretty inspiring. Weirdly, yeah. So when you I see like how it, ripped it's my cartoon is, and you're like, dude, if a cartoon can look like that, why not it's me? It's a cartoon, though. If I, if a cartoon can look like that, why not me, dude? You know, but it's a cartoon. <laughs> it's not a real person. I never mind. What? No, I'm not gonna say it. Okay. Where you just remember this is a and this is and there, I remember there, there, will, this, there will be Lebanese people here. Lebanese people love me, <laughs> dude. We got the first the first fucking episode we ever did. Anthony got us in trouble with Lebanon. <laughs> yeah, no, you know why? The first episode, day one, they hated you. It was fun. No, they hated, they hated me. They hated, they hated you. you. When you guys were laughing, at, you guys were laughing at, at, at poor yeah, Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. Who we love, by the way. We I've been watching all of his videos. I love him since that day. Uh, they thought we were ops. Yeah, they thought we were ops. I I, I want to give the the listeners a backstory because it's from our first episode. So if you haven't watched <laughs> every single episode, you may not understand. But Anthony did a documentary, which is fucking fantastic. I found your pod because I'm like a big UFO nerd, and I found your pod because it was like Lebanese UFOs, and I was like, brother, yeah. you're speaking my language. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Who the fuck made an English speaking pod in Lebanon on Lebanese UFOs? <laughs> Whatever the fuck this is, I'm watching this shit. And I'm like, I remember That's watching true. it. And like, this is like years ago. Then I was like following the pod for like a while. 
And I would just like kind of pop <laughs> in and out, you know, because I was like, dude, this is cool. I get to keep up with Lebanon because ain't no fucking person explains Lebanon in English. And the and the Arabic people may not know this, but the Arabic that's on TV in Lebanon, I can't understand. Is it Fusha? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Fusha Arabic. Yeah. So soft. so it's uh there's a common Arabic that everyone speaks on TV, but nobody really speaks it in the streets. And it's the formal written Arabic. Yeah. And then there's Arabic that you talk in the streets, which is what I learned is like the Lebanese. Yeah, like I was the, taught Fusha. You know, the the I'm going to kiss your peepee, Lebanese. You know, like when your friends come up, oh, you know? Yeah. So like, anyway. So, gay. That's Lebanese, That just perpetuates the gay, gay Lebanese. Bro, if, Lebanese, if, exactly. Baby. If so Israel, how come you guys don't do it to each other if, then? If Israel, we do. We you do. Just don't you see just it. don't see it. Yeah, you don't see it. If Israel bombs Lebanon, it's when I when I greet his parents, I always three kiss, not his mom because she's Palestinian. Yeah. No, I I'm kiss his dad. You're supposed to. Th I do this all the time. This is you the know who I three kiss. Who? My husband. You know it's two kiss for Palestinians. You know yeah, that. it's two kiss for Palestinians. I three I get in I trouble three, all I the three time kiss my my gay husband. Do you Austin show? <laughs> Anytime he sees me, no. I get a. Younger people, just, we just do one kiss, like one kiss and a hug. Like the three kisses is yeah. like kind of dying out, I would say. It's like more of a family yeah, thing. Yeah, bro, we got to bring it back. Anthony, I'm keeping it alive. Okay. We're switching back to We're switching to one kiss. I'm sorry. Nah, one nah, kiss. Nah, the nah, three, nah, and like COVID also kind of got rid of the kisses. So now everyone's just doing like uh, one kiss. Yeah. Oh. Dude, thank no, God. I'm not, I'm not saying the cheek kiss. The I'm kisses. saying like the assault kiss. The assault kiss is the best part. Yeah, but you guys don't do it to each we other. We do do it to each no, other. No, you do it. No, so... uh I did, that happens to me all the time. What will end up happening is like an aunt will come to my house and I don't remember if she's Palestinian <laughs> or Lebanese and I'll go in for like the two kiss and then she'll be like, nah, <laughs> Habibi. And then like, she's like, what happened? I'm like, fuck, bro, I don't know. I don't know your race, dude. <laughs> no, but when my tante was alive, <laughs> I would always forget. Like I'd start sweating. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how many fucking kisses it's it is. Three for Lebanese. <laughs> it's three for Lebanese because we extra and uh, two for Palestinian, yeah. you know? That's why Lebanese say banadura instead of ban or bandura and then banadura. Yo, some Lebanese people have the most atrocious accents I've ever heard in my fucking life. Damn, she stared deep why in your you, soul. Me, my accent is a joke. No, it's not. Anthony, the way Capri speaks Arabic is vile. vile. I need to hear some, like, like a full sentence. Uh, I need okay, to hear if you say, full if you say Abu Zabar one time, I, I will, I will I rip do off your Zabar. Okay, I do that <laughs> Okay, well, I, this is my Arabic accent. I go like, "What if Habibi Shram Tamil?" That's not that bad. Like, is that a bad accent? <laughs> Dude, he's laughing. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's because you sound like you're doing a character. That's like that. That's what I like about it. Like, it's, yeah, that's, it's how, not that's how you do it. <laughs> I talk just like my stupid cousins are like Shubek. You know, that's how they talk. They're like, very animated. They're like, and then everything they're like Shubek and the Shubek. Like, 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 where are you? It helps. You know it helps favorite? to be animated. It's it's a little bit like Italian in a sense. You know what yeah. I mean? You kind of got to move the hands and you got to like use the eyes and the face and be expressive. You know, it's my favorite um, clip of Capri language. is he was talking to a Palestinian refugee that was getting like surgery on their legs, and he started talking to him in Arabic. The kid literally rolled away, dude, from him oh in his wheelchair. The kid, the kid, fucking, he did not fuck with he you. He loved me, dude. <laughs> He's like, you're eating gyps? Gyps? I'm like, I'm, what am I going to say, dude? I felt bad for the kid. I was just like trying to... He's like, hey, do you want to talk to him? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like, fuck, dude. And that's a, that, the one thing that like, to, to make it serious, but the one thing that people don't realize is like, dude, that's like my, like a normal cousin for me. Like in Lebanon, like it's very, very like communal and Palestine's communal. Like you see some kid on the street, you go up to him, you're like, chew, key, fuck. It's not like creepy, you know, like in the States... If you talk to like someone else's kid, you're going to fucking jail and you're like a criminal and everyone's, everything's yeah, yeah. Everything's yeah. like everything's, everything's, like everything's the worst thing it could possibly be. But in Lebanon, you're like, dude, shoo habibi, what's up? Like, what are you doing? You're eating chips, shoo. You know, what do you like you're just nice to people? No, like, I was gonna say, even nah. like we've talked about this before, like even the like, times when we've we've gone out or something, you could tell like we're the only Arabs Arab ones based on how people like act at like houses and shit. Yeah, we start cleaning their fucking house at parties, Anthony. Yeah. We we'll go to a fucking influencer party. Everyone is in there. They eat. They they drink. They leave. Our three dumbasses are like, Habibi, what can we help you We're, with? Like, uh, let's clean up. Can we like? Yeah. Can we clean the kitchen? We we'll have so, to. Twenty minutes in, I see Raf and Frogan washing the kitchen. You know, and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> man. Like, yeah. I'm like, I feel bad too. I'm doing the Arabic thing, and people don't get that. Like, the only country I can ever compare Lebanon to, and and it's very similar for very similar reasons resistance right lebanon lebanese people and, and palestinian people they're very similar uh but it's a, it's a lot like ireland when i went to ireland they'll do the same things mm -hmm. they'll offer you the shirt off their back and it was the only place in the world i ever went to that i was treated like a human being for being palestinian they were like 
I told the cab driver in Ireland, I'm like, hey, man, he's like, where are you from? I'm like, I'm half Palestinian, half Lebanese. He was like, oh, my God, dude, what the, this is way before this is happening. He goes, what they're doing to you guys yeah. in Israel is fucked up. Fuck that country. But you got to remember the Lebanese people were arming the Irish against the British because British were occupying them and they wanted to take over Ireland. And they understand that the same thing is happening. So they, they fought for their freedom, you know? So they, they were very similar. Like everything's communal. You go to a bar, people will be like, Hey man, come stay at my house. You're good. Like you want a beer? Like come, come, you know, I ended up like touring the, the country with just some people there. Cause they were just like, yeah, whatever, let's go. So it's the only other country. Like Lebanon is not like it's, 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 it's all, it's also a beautiful country. It's one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to, but it's one of those things that people think like if you're a white person walking around a white person, quote unquote, because there are white Lebanese and black Lebanese and dark, you know, the people will just attack uh -huh. you, but it's not like that. The, the worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to offer you free food. You know, if you're an American walking around, those be like, Hey, come to my house. You know, where are you from? Okay. You know, yeah, they love, dude, people love, they love tourists. Like when they go to like a little local restaurant, they'll just feed you. And like, everybody loves like, it. we've all had the cousin that, that comes and visits from abroad that you give them the tour and you take them around. And like, and Le Lebanon, like used to thrive on tourism. Not right now, but like usually, you know what I mean? Like people, <laughs> flock from like all over the world and like a lot of other Arabs from other countries because like in countries like Saudi Arabia or Dubai it's like way too hot so they come here because the weather is a little bit nicer yeah. in the summer and they can go to the beach and like um, yeah it's it's a, it's a, usually it's a pretty fun place right now I guess uh, the fun times are over for uh, for a little while what do you um, I mean like what what would like what are we gauging like the future kind of being the next like few I guess weeks to like a month or from now. I mean, like, I mean, obviously it's going to keep happening. I hopefully not, but I mean, I have, it's hard. It's, it's hard to say. Yeah. No idea, dude. Like yeah. anytime I look at my Twitter, it, it seems a little bit more dire. Uh, a lot of the reporters that I follow are saying this is going to be a long and brutal war and that Israel is going to take advantage of like, they're in this. Netanyahu doesn't want to leave power. He's, he's, he's expanding this war so he can just stay in power. Right. So since they've already killed the, the leader, I think they're just going to try to take out as much of Hezbollah as they can. And in the process, just wipe out as much of Lebanon as they can from like Dahia to, to, to South Lebanon, make it uninhabitable. They're going to try to invade parts of the South and occupy parts of the South again to create that buffer zone that they want to create between Hezbollah and the inhabitants of the north because they want the north settlers to come back to their settlements because Hezbollah rockets have like driven them away essentially. Right. So that's their excuse for doing all of this as well. So it's just going to keep getting worse, I guess. I mean, our only hopes are like diplomatic talks. And but again, that's going to do nothing. You know what I mean? Like, the, like we don't even have a sitting president right now. So no one takes us seriously. And as you guys were talking about earlier, Israel is already manufacturing consent to the possibility of them occupying us because we're not a, we're a failed state or like we're not a real state. And like articles questioning is Leb was Lebanon actually promised to uh, to to the Jewish people as well. So it's like, oh, my God, so just insane brainwashing uh, going on. Um, I don't see the violence stopping anytime soon. Like parts yeah. of me finds it hard to believe that it's going to keep going, but it, you just see what happened in Gaza. Why would they stop? Who's going to stop them? It's still Netanyahu in Gaza. He's a, he's a dog without a leash and it's, I love dogs. So like, it's not, I don't even want to call him a dog because like dogs are amazing <laughs> animals and Netanyahu is a, just a horrible piece of crap. But like, he's like this wild little petulant child murdering people and li literally no one cares so i see this going for at least 40 days of just like a lot of violent bombardments um if there's some kind of i mean my only hope is as and as you got like when you were asking me earlier like if how, how can humanize like lebanese people and and you guys said it like everyone knows a lebanese person Everyone knows a Lebanese person. Like I was in, I lived in the States for like eight years. I met a lot of Lebanese people. There are huge Lebanese communities and Lebanese people kind of thrive wherever they go. Like in every country where there are Lebanese people, there are Lebanese people in high positions of power, like CEOs, leaders of companies, business owners, uh, council people, their, their, their political office. So like my only hope is that there's like some way that some of these people can find a way to put enough pressure on, on, politicians certain lobbies but like the the israeli lobby is so powerful that they just bought every single u.s politician they literally had netanyahu over a few weeks ago and giving him a standing ovation as he insulted american protesters right outside and calling them like iranian uh spies or whatever i can't remember what he said but like something ridiculous he's insulting american taxpayers 
who are funding his genocide, funding his people's health care, essentially. Like, Israelis have health care, but, like, Americans don't, and we pay. Like, it's, it's insane. It's and crazy. they just got $8 heard- billion dollars in another donation. I heard that the U.S. literally funds Israel's universal health care system. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's they, give them, yeah. they it's give them a military budget, uh, Israel a military budget, and they use the leftover uh, military budget they have to uh, fund their health care system. Israel is a failed state without our fucking money. And the fact of the matter is that like, you know, my, my plea to like people who don't agree with me is like, do you not understand that? Like they are hurting American, American power because everyone used to see us as the world police and the good guys. And Mm -hmm. this situation right now, even if you fucking hate Arabs, this is awful for America because everyone sees this as a fucking laughing stock and a joke. I mean, you know, it's also fucking Joe Biden's fault and Kamala Harris's fault for being asleep at the fucking wheel. But dude, it's like, it, it, like I, I can't, I don't suspect, look, here's the one thing I know as a Palestinian person, like the one hope I have is that the 10, 15 years ago, if you said anything about Israel, they'd be like, don't fucking dare nobody. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. they're the laughing stock of the fucking world and people know the pariah state that they are and it is a very different situation where people now know what a shithole it is and i really hope they they start they are losing money their economy is in shambles i I know that they're hiding it but their economy is in shambles and the people from the south the people who have uh who've left from the north they don't want to be there um and netanyahu is begging them to basically go home but you know the whole hope that Israel is going to be the safest place for Jews on the planet. It's just really falling apart. And now people are starting yeah. to realize like even the fucking, even the Israelis are going, Oh yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. They're leaving, you know, what, what, one third of small businesses have closed down. And I mean, that was always Hezbollah's strategy. Anyways, they were never going to win militarily. Their plan was just always to make being in Israel, like a huge inconvenience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Constant That's- bombings, having to yeah. hide in shelters. Like who would want to live there? Closing businesses. The economy is in shambles. So people would kind of leave and they would kind of lose leverage. So that was always their plan. They were never going to beat. You can't beat Israel. They have I- American weapons. They have nukes. There's nothing we can do to stop yeah, them. Yeah. But we could. The plan was just to make it as inconvenient and as shitty as possible. And like people just flee because most people who live in Israel are dual citizens. They can just hop on yeah. a plane, go somewhere else. They'll be fine. Um. And uh, yeah, I I said I said that all the time about resistance groups. Resistance groups don't need to win the war. They just need to make it so fucking costly that the other side just goes, I can't afford to do this anymore. It's a waste of fucking time. I got to go. I mean, that's the one thing that saddens me about Lebanon is that Lebanese people are resilient. So if they try to occupy, they will resist and they will make it costly as fuck for Israel to be there. And that's that's the one thing is like I've tried to tell people I'm like, look, I. I'm still fighting with my family. I'm like, dude, they're going to occupy the South. They're going to settle the South. I don't know what you think you're doing, you know? So uh, it, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I, I really, I'm not very, I, I think you're right, Anthony, that there's so many people in leadership positions like CEOs. I mean, like within one day I saw more action happen for Lebanon than I did for a lot of big cr- content creators and celebrities talk about Palestine. Because like I didn't I see said, anybody talk about Lebanon. I saw a bunch but, of people yeah, say I, I have family in Lebanon. They have family I, in Lebanon. A lot of people said it. I was talking to Frogan on her stream a couple of days ago. Um, I feel like creators are kind of, and, and she mentioned that too, like they're kind of so burnt out on talking about Palestine for a year and then seeing that nothing happened, that like the, I feel like the, the prospect of having to cover another war is just like super daunting. And just knowing that how futile it is, I feel like it's going to feel like a waste of time for everyone. Like, ah, I just spent a year talking about Gaza and Palestine. Does my audience want to hear about another Middle Eastern country getting blown to bits by by Israel? So, um, I don't know. I, yeah, I was... And to me, even as a creator who, who felt that like, who feels like my, the only thing that I can do is talk about this. But it's like, am I wasting my time? That's all I can do. I can't pick up arms and go fight. So... No, I was thinking about this, too, because I'm like, okay, people are going to have I mean, people see Israel as bad now, but they're going to have to learn the history of like, oh, because it's obviously people are back to like, oh, Hezbollah bad. Um, They're terrorists. Israel did a good thing, even though like we've talked about it's not black and white. Like they obviously existed because they're like part of they were the resistance group of Lebanon and their existence is literally because of Israel. So they have to learn the history of that. And I just feel like 
like I was telling you on stream, like Americans are very, very selfish. Like they don't give a fuck about anything unless it's directly impacting them. You know, I know, I know. It's crazy. I was like, I, I was visiting uh, last December for Christmas and I was at my friend uh, Dane's place and we were just like, just we quickly talked about what was happening in Palestine. Like, yeah, that's horrible. And then, and then we just ordered like Bonchon. I think that, that's what it was called. Like wings, really good bon spicy Korean wings. Yeah. And we just went on with our night, played some Dark Souls. And um, like, that was that, you know what I mean? So it's like, unless it directly affects you, no one's really going to care. Even your friends who, 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 who have like Arab friends and stuff. Like I have a bunch of DMs on my phone that I haven't had time to check from like a lot of my friends from the States. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I really don't know what I expect from people anymore. And I mean, this whole thing, honestly, like, the, I kind of blame the U.S. Like, to me, this the, the U.S. is basically doing this to us. Yeah. So as, as, a, as a U.S. citizen, I'm so conflicted because I spend my life being raised on like American media, American movies, American like comic books. I love. I have a, I have a tattoo of Captain America right here. How ironic is that? Like, I, if I could get this lasered off or something, I would right now. Like, I feel so ashamed of being even associated with the states. If my family, if my my parents and my sister weren't currently living in in the states. I wouldn't want to go back to visit, honestly. I feel kind of guilty being there. Every dollar I spend is contributing to, to them bombing my own people. I don't feel respected in the States anymore. I don't feel like I'm seen, even though there, there are a lot of amazing people. And ever since you shared that clip on Twitter and Hassan reacted to it, I'm getting so many nice messages from, from people from all over the world that aren't Arabs, that aren't Lebanese. You know what I mean? And it's, it, 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 it's heartening to see, but just to know that just the, the political power is just so hopeless and it's so corrupt that you're just kind of like and, and and as a dual citizen you just feel like shit and like even there, there's that i saw a tweet that's like the the u.s embassy in israel is offering charter flights for u.s citizens but they're yeah. not doing the, the same to, to to lebanese citizens like you have to find your own flight not that i would want to leave even if the u.s was offering a flight i don't want to leave i want to stay here if i have to die here i want to die here like i, I don't want to escape even though that's a smart thing to do but I, I want to be here, you know, for, for whatever, whatever this ends up, because I have to, if I can just get the word out, that's all I want to do. Um, it's just kind of, uh, it's all absurd. And the fact that we, we, we've been talking for a year and just like watching everything happen in Gaza, and now we're watching it happen here, before we've had a chance to actually like hang out in person. I think, uh, you know, I hope I get a chance to come in December. That would be uh, well, pretty I, awesome. I hope so, too. I think that'd be great, uh, you know. God willing, the, 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 the airport is still intact and everything is kind of calmed down to where you can actually have air commerce out, out of the country. That is <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah. They're talking about it like a blockade right now, so I don't. It, we don't know if like what kind of blockade is that going to lead to like food shortages or they, like can we not import anything? Like how far right. are they taking this whole thing? It's like because uh, all the trade for Lebanon happens in South Lebanon, right? No, like it's Beirut. The, they're the port, the of port Beirut, Beirut, and Beirut. Oh, the port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like a lot of people do the port as well. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it sucks, man. Like, it, it's it's so you're there. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, it's almost surreal. Like, this can't happen. Like, th this can't happen. Like, what the fuck? Like, it just doesn't feel... Because, like, they've been doing this. They've been... Like, again, they've been dehumanizing Palestinians. Like, as a Pal the Palestinian side of me, like, I know that th this happens. This is normal for us. But the Lebanese side, it's like, this isn't normal for us, you know? So... It's like, man, I have two homes in the world. I have two fucking places that I go to, like that I go and visit. And I go back home. One of them I lost before I was even fucking born, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have that place. And the only other fucking place I want to go to, which I haven't gone to in a while, is is uh, is go back to to Lebanon. I was in Beirut. I was living in Zala. You know, I was living in a fucking apartment by myself. Oh, yeah. And I fucking used to go and walk to the Starbucks and, you know, the, now I can't drink for Starbucks, but I used Not to go. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I used to go walk to the Starbucks and I get fucking Starbucks and fucking uh, go, like, get groceries and shit and fucking bitch about Lebanon because some of this shit made no sense to me. Like, why the fuck can I not download <laughs> movies until two o'clock in the morning because my rates of the fucking in the internet would go up or the mafia <laughs> comes and knocks on your door because you have two electric bills you have one bill for the fucking generator and one bill for the fucking power plant. And I'm like, bitch, I just paid you, you know? And it's so corrupt, but like at the same time, it's so fucking awesome, dude. Because like 
The one thing that Americans lack is that they have no community. When you move here, there's no fuck. You got to make your own community or you die here. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's so many fucking yeah. crazy cat ladies because Americans won't leave their goddamn fucking homes. No offense, but you are. So, but the deal is, <laughs> uh, uh, but the deal is, no, but the deal is like in, in Lebanon, there's not a day that you don't go and like have tea with someone or sit down with like, it's a different fucking life. It's a better, it is a better life. You know, there, there's, there's bad stuff like. My lungs got fucking charred. Like I had to go to the doctor when I came back because they, uh, when I was there, Anthony, they were burning tires in the whole city of Beirut. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 and they burned garbage as well because we had a whole garbage crisis. So there was a nice phase where they still do it. Oh, they just yeah. burn trash. They pile up a bunch of trash. They burn trash. I and forgot burn about the garbage crisis. When I when I got home from Beirut, they, I went to the doctor and I had like a, a high red blood cell count. They go, "Do you smoke?" I go, well, "Yeah, I smoke hookah," you know. But they're like. Yeah, your lungs look like you're a smoker, like cigarettes every day. And I'm like, well, I was in Beirut. They're like, ah, pollution. You know, I'm like, okay, well, you know. But, dude, that's like the thing, man. Like, we're talking to you about this. And I, I'm, we're probably going to have, hopefully, we don't have to have you back on to talk about this shit. Uh, you know, hopefully. Talk about other things. Other things. Other but horrible like, things that we'll get into another time, maybe. <laughs> yeah, dude. But, like, I think that your, your guys' voice there's so many, there's so many Lebanese people, like I said, but your, your voice right now really matters. And like that you, those clips that we're, we're able to share and shit. And I'm glad that they fucking did do numbers because I think that people need to understand that you guys are real people. And, uh, you know, like I said, in Gaza, they, they really fucking fucked us back to the stone age. I still have an editor. Like my editor was in Gaza. My brother's editor was in Gaza. So oh they still God. like do TikToks and shit. He got out luckily so he's gone i didn't say anything until he got out but for you guys like having an active pod having a community having all this shit it, it's it's like i'm glad that i'm glad that we're able to share with our audience and i hope you guys go and sub to anthony i know that you said you're going to do more of the things in english uh, because uh, i think like right now dude your voice really matters mm -hmm. uh it really does uh, you may not feel like you're doing shit but like i felt like i was doing nothing man and how many fucking people from my community, however small they were, DM me and was like, I had no idea anything about the Middle East. You've explained it. And I, no, I changed my whole thing. Even, even past that, like whenever we did the Creators for Palestine stream, mm -hmm. uh, Capri and I were, we did a segment with Keith where we were trying like Palestinian foods. And people were tweeting us that like their cousins in Gaza were literally watching us. And they felt so represented and so happy because we're eating the foods that they haven't been able to have. Yeah. And like showing their culture. Yeah. So your voice and like talking about everything is more important than you think it is. Yeah. And I know, man, I, know I, you've been, so. yeah, I, I know you've been hitting the fucking Arab audience, but like Americans need to see this shit. Like uh, we really, that's the whole goal, dude, is to get the fucking Americans to be like, wake up, wake up, fucking idiots. And yeah, if we can bridge that gap, it's, it's our, it's our blessing to do so, mm -hmm. you know, but all I can say is like, Call your representatives, you know what I mean? I don't know, write <laughs> letters if you have to, take to the streets, whatever you have to do, just make Protest. your voices heard. Like, I, we honestly, we have nothing else. Like, it's just people rising up and just a lot of, uh, like, like Jewish voice for peace. They just had, a, like, an awesome post on Instagram, like, standing up for Lebanon. We need more people like that, young people that are, that know what's right and know what's wrong, that know the difference between Zionism and anti-Semitism that don't conflate the two because that's the, like that's a huge problem. And there has been a rise in anti-Semitism. I see it on Twitter all the time. Like yeah. it's insane. So that it's not like we, we can't deny that that's happening. But also Israel is to blame. Like they have a Star of David on their flag and they're committing all of these war crimes in the name of Jews, which is which is the last thing that that actual Jewish people actually believe. So they're in turn like they're they're making a more unsafe world by doing this they're creating more radicalism the whole middle east hates the west now like if they think we're ever going to trust anything that comes out of their mouths the double standards and human rights has been insane to watch over the past year and they're doing it twice in a row two genocide that, that's the funny part too like two in a row so uh yeah it's kind of crazy yeah yeah um I, we're gonna plug the do not worry pod right here yeah go. giraffe put it over here i think uh i think we should wrap up with anthony and then we don't i don't think we need to even do a patreon because if people want to support today we could just tell them go support on patreon but we're not going to do one because mm -hmm. i think that this is i want to keep this all free personally no yeah. this is all free yeah, yeah this is all free. i want i don't want to pay wall this week no, no absolutely not um 
Uh, Anthony, is there anything else you want to say before we let you go? Uh, I know it's like it's five, five o'clock in the, in the morning. morning there, so. No, good luck. I got, I'm going to go to bed, have uh, to work tomorrow, which is going to be very weird because you just have to like send emails and, and right. write stuff. Yeah. I work in like reality television and like a TV production house. So I have to just think of completely unrelated things. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a little bit weird. Uh, I hope I get to talk to you guys again soon. I'm excited to watch the episode and uh, hopefully get to, to hang out with you guys uh, in December. Are you all going to be in the States in December or is anyone traveling to be anywhere? Wait, I mean, it depends Anyone when you come. Be- I'll, I'll be in Florida, but like that's like Christmas week. Yeah, I'll be here um, unless I'm in Lebanon visiting my family. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> I, I think I might be going home in December, Christmas time, but I'll be here. Yeah, I I live here, so whenever you come, I'm here. All right, because that, that's when I would be visiting around Christmas, like to New Year's time, like a two week yeah, stretch. We'll be back so. before yes. New Year's. Let, let's figure it out, and we'll we'll do it, and then we'll have you. We we definitely need to have you in person. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. And we don't have to do another episode. Like, it, it, no, 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 just, no. Just hang out. Just hang Fuck out. This We're going to be for the fucking out, streets. Man. We'll just hang out. And then we'll also do an episode. We'll do yeah. things you've never done before. Yeah. What's something that you think Anthony's never done before? Xbox. <laughs> no, he's definitely played. He's played Dark Souls. He's, he knows Xbox. PlayStation. That, yeah. But yeah. He's I, never got a pedicure. Xbox, PlayStation. Oh, have you, have, you got a, have you ever gotten a pedicure? No, never. There you go. All right. Well, there that's we what we're doing. Get your, spa get your, day. Americans <laughs> love right, feet, so go. get your fucking feet ready, dude. <laughs> All right, let's go. Are you bringing? A, are you bringing your? Are you planning on bringing your girlfriend with you uh, if you come back or no? Uh, I, I don't. She's got to get a visa. It's pretty complicated to, to oh, get yeah, to the yeah, states, yeah, but yeah, I, mean, yeah. I would like to. But like, uh, might might be difficult. But uh, yeah, I'd love to show her the states. But like right now, again, we none of us really even want to go to the states. Yeah. Yeah. So I just feel here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's like encouraging, uh, like uh, the empire. It's weird, man. It's weird. Yeah, dude. Yeah. People don't realize how Star Wars. I got a laser is. off this Captain America tattoo. That's my next step. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, I was gonna that. say, if, if your girlfriend ended up coming, we could, we'll all do a tattoo session. She oh can my tat god, us kids! Oh hell yeah, 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 You guys have tattoo machines. She could teach you some basics, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave Raf a tattoo on his thigh, and then Raf gave me this one. I don't know if you can see it from here, but he did this one. <laughs> I well, maybe I'll let you. Ooh, that's, that's actually not that bad. That's pretty bad. I mean, from here. Yeah, from, from there from is perfect. This, no, don't this get sense. close. Don't get any closer. No, don't get any closer. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I see some of the flaws. But hey, that's not bad. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's for like a be for like a non tattoo artist. Huh? For for like a non tattoo artist. Yeah. That's that, that, that's. Not- I don't know how they do it. Uh, halfway through it, I was like, "Oh shit, I'm I'm piercing somebody's skin willingly," and it made me shake and get nervous. Halfway through, am I like a psycho then? Yeah, it's horrifying. What do you mean? Because whenever I gave you your tattoo, I was like, "Well, well this everyone is- started coming into that, I, like, and we were like talking. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, dude, guys, get get the fuck away from me right now." It was so fun, but yeah. Thank we you so you, much buddy. for coming on. We really, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Thanks for staying up. I love you awesome. guys. This was a great conversation. Worth staying up until what time is it? Four <laughs> seventeen in the morning. Five, Hope you guys five, are safe. Five. Hope your families are safe. Uh, we'll yeah, talk super soon. You stay safe. Hope your family and, uh, stays safe. Love right you now. guys. Love you love too, you. buddy. Your brother. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye, Bye guys. Icon. And that's how gay people live. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to do a Patreon episode talking about TwitchCon. I, we I, can. I, we can, but like to be honest, I think this week what we could do... What we'll just do is we'll just um, say support the Patreon, and then we'll just say if you guys want a Patreon episode, just go check eat. out Do Not Worry. Yeah. That's let's just do that. Let's, let's just push them to Do Not Worry instead of doing a Patreon episode. Yeah, I really think it's just like a weird to be like, let's talk about Twitch after... I, yeah, I, after I'm, that. I'm spent, kind of, dude. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have to get Lebanese food today. Yeah, I, we do. We'll go get food after this. Okay. Um, He's not going to want Lebanese food. He did say he wants Lebanese food. Let's wrap this up real quick, though. Um, all right. So, uh, well, uh, thank you guys so much for, for watching today's episode um, with Anthony from the Do Not Worry podcast. Make sure you go check out the Do Not Worry podcast. 
Make sure you uh, keep up to date with what's going on in Lebanon. Follow, follow him on Twitter. As, as follow well. him on Twitter. Do not worry on Twitter. And then his name is Anthony Sargon. Yeah. But his actual handles do not work. We'll put, uh, you guys have seen it before, but we'll put it up again on the, on the bottom third um, where you could go check him out. And, you know, uh, just keep abreast of what's going on in Lebanon. I mean, I, I, I know we're exhausted from what's going on in Palestine, which is still going on. It hasn't stopped. But this is important. And, you know, it's important, especially with the elections coming up, not that, to be completely fucking honest with you, we, we have no good choices this year. We only have the choice of not voting or voting us for a psychopath um, or just a lesser psychopath. So make sure you do your research and vote. Um, uh, do what Anthony says. If you guys have the chance to write to your legislators. Um, do that as well, or call in. It's not that difficult to call your congressman. Um, in fact, if anything, you call in, and a receptionist just takes your message, and it seems like it doesn't do anything, but they do, by law, have to get those messages and go through them. So, um, Also, yeah, we're not going to do a Patreon this week just because we wanted to make this free, so share it. Like, share it with people. Mm -hmm. uh, share Anthony's stuff, and if you don't want to share it with people, go go sub to the Do Not Worry pod, and then follow Anthony. Uh, if you want to support us, you can sub to Patreon. Uh, we're we're going to have, we have a guest next week. We had to film two episodes this week because we have a guest. Yeah. So we're outfit repeaters. We're so out, yeah. so don't us, say don't shit. Don't judge us. Yeah. But we but will be fresh. But the episode our is great. fits right now, I will give you a hint as to who our guest is for next week. That's true. That's so good. if you can figure it out, except mm -hmm. for Capri's fit. <laughs> I will be the guest. Um, <laughs> Comment okay. Lebanese flags down below. Yeah. Yeah. For, comment for, you know, for, uh, Lebanese flags. Uh, yeah, I keep. Up, I did keep, the person who said I, I I was so hot on our last on our last YouTube video. Thank you for that. So many people say that all the time. Thank you. I don't read the comments. I refuse to. But thank you for saying that. When did are you, we? Did you catfish me? Did you make a fake profile? I've been I've had a fake profile, and you're I've been one of your viewers for like three years, under a name you don't know. Which one? I can't tell you. Um, I hope it's. I hope it's not. All right, comment that below. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to end this one, dude. It's it sucks. That was it. Support Lebanon. Uh, we all have family there. We are Lebanese. Um, we are Lebanese. Let's let's end it with the national anthem, but we fade out. Barukato. Okay. Wait, no. That's <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was just praying. My okay. Kaluna Kaluanten. Fade out. Kaluna Kaluanten. No. The national anthem of Beirut is Le Beirut by Feirouz. That we're, we're talking about Lebanon. Beirut doesn't have a national anthem. Bye, yes, guys. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. See ya.